using artificial stimulating ways to increase their energy level. And we're going to talk a lot about tonight about how the body produces energy naturally so that you can have energy all the time when it's supposed to and not have to basically force energy upon the body when you need it because you're so exhausted, which is what's commonly happening. So energy from Greek, energia means activity and operation. And energy created in the body is pretty simple. It's produced by cellular respiration. It's at the cellular level, as nutrients enter the body, it creates a spark, it creates fire, it creates life, it creates heat, it creates energy. And that all depends on the quality of nutrients we're putting in our body and how well our cells are responding uh, to that. And just like we talked about almost every class, we actually talked a lot about last night in the acid alkaline balance class was one of the keys to that is minerals. Minerals is the spark of life. Minerals, especially those electrolyte minerals, is what makes everything spark and fire in your body, like a giant ocean of electrical activity. That's why athletes and people who have high active lifestyles replenish their minerals. That's like replenish, replenishing their fuel so they can keep their energy levels up. So minerals are a very, very important aspect uh, about keeping your energy levels up. Um, I just gave the analogy, humans need energy like a car needs gas. We all need something to get us going and to help us keep going. Hey, how you doing? Hey, here you go. All right, thanks. You're welcome. We might need to print more. I don't know if someone else is going to We just started. You missed like two minutes. <laughs> uh, so I'm probably going to spend a lot of time talking about a couple of the most important glands in your body for energy production. The thyroid and the adrenals. Two glands we might know a lot about already or have heard about how important they are but maybe not completely understand their function and how important they are specifically to our energy levels. I'm going to first talk about in detail the thyroid gland. I think it's hands down the most important gland in your body for energy production. It is nicknamed your master metabolism gland. It is literally responsible for your metabolism, for weight loss, maintaining proper weight levels. It's responsible for uh, how the cells get energy into the body. It's responsible for your temperature, your body temperature, and making sure that's regulated. People that have abnormal fluctuations in body temperature definitely have a thyroid issue going on. Most commonly, people have underactive thyroids, but people oftentimes have overactive thyroids as well. As a uh, David Wolf put it, if, if some of you know who David Wolf is, um, he, uh, he, the way he basically explained it and the way he explains how important the thyroid is, is he says humans are like a, a tree upside down. So in other words, if we were to turn ourselves upside down and plant our heads in the ground, our thyroid is like our root system. It's like the most important part of the rest of our body. I mean, it's like a another word for, for thyroid, from the Greek, it actually means shield. It's a shield for the entire body. It's that important, the thyroid is. So not just for energy, but for so many other functions too, for your immune system and for your overall health. So thyroid is key, 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 and that's why I really want to focus on it a lot tonight, um, because it's going to help with your energy levels, but so many other issues a lot of people deal with too, which is weight, um, body temperature, things like that. The thyroid is going to, going to be important as well. So, one of the things about the thyroid is it's very negatively charged. We talked a lot last night about negative ions and positive ions when we talked about acid alkaline. <coughs> well, because the thyroid is so negatively charged, has just a high negative charge, it has a lot of activity going through the thyroid. Blood circulates through the thyroid more than any other organ in the entire body. Okay? There's a lot of activity going on in the thyroid because it's so important. Well, because it has such a high negative charge, it attracts all of the positive charges that come into our body. And positive charges that come into our body are the not so great things, okay? All the aluminum and lead and mercury, things in our food supply, um, any other kind of toxins or pollutants or anything like that that's in our system, is the, the, the thyroid will attract those things. So it, unfortunately, is one of the first things that will start to... Uh, start to, to malfunction uh, because of toxins that are in our body. 
because it has such an affinity for, for those for those types of materials. So you really want to work on your thyroid health for this reason, um, because it's that important. I'm going to talk about some of the things that, uh, well, here, here's some of the symptoms of thyroid dysfunction, just in case any of you can relate to these. But fatigue, like we talked about, it's very important for, for your energy production. Uh, weight gain, you know, the, the job of the, the thyroid is to maintain proper weight levels. You know, so if you're overweight, your thyroid is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, dry skin, constipation, hair loss, cold sensitivities. Constant cold hand and feet, improper circulation also can be from thyroid dysfunction. Okay. Any questions so far? <coughs> so, because the thyroid is so prone to so many of these toxins and heavy metals and poisons that are in the body, it's really important that we take care of it. So I'm going to go ahead now and talk about some of the most important things for the health of your thyroid. Uh, the first one, hands down, is iodine. Uh, the thyroid should have, as I was read one time, the thyroid should literally be dripping in iodine. And there's very few foods we consume that have iodine in it. Even though iodine grows all around here in black walnut, we don't usually find good ways to get iodine in our diet. So it's a great thing to supplement, uh, a good iodine supplement. The best, all sea vegetables contain iodine, but the, the best one that they've studied and researched that has a real affinity for the thyroid is kelp. So kelp is definitely your best sea vegetable for the health of your thyroid. The other thing that's amazing for the thyroid especially an underactive thyroid, when your thyroid starts to get sluggish and just starts to shut down, what will really pick it back up? Coconut oil. And we talk about coconut oil almost every class, but coconut oil is awesome. Um, I mean, I've read so many testimonials about people with underactive, sluggish thyroids, weight problems, all kinds of things going on, poor energy levels. They start taking coconut oil and boom, it just brings them back to life, that one single thing. Forget about the fat content, forget the fact that it's saturated fat, that's a whole other class. Coconut oil is critically important and healthy for our body. I think it's one of the best oils you can possibly put. So how long do you need to take it? Well, it's something you, you can take forever. Uh, if initially you want to repair a thyroid or you want to lose weight or something like that, you can take as much as three, four tablespoons a day. Uh, a lot of athletes, um, marathon runners, for example, will take coconut oil because it gives them long, sustainable energy throughout the day. It's a, a, a great fuel source for the body. So, you know, the class is on energy, so it's one of your best sources of energy is coconut oil. It has more calories than a carbohydrate, um, and it's, it's, it's not burned quickly like sugars and those simple carbohydrates are. It's a more sustainable fuel source for the body, so it lasts throughout the day. So coconut oil is a great way to start your morning in a shake or smoothie or an oatmeal or some, some people just throw it in hot water uh, and, and drink it. Um, I mean, how many people here take coconut oil? I know a few of you are. Yeah, so half of you are better. Um, just one of, the, one of the best things you can put in your body, but in a special, special affinity for the thyroid. Now, good fats in general feed the glandular system, so other good fats is important as well. But coconut, especially for the thyroid, is amazing. Um, I think we'll get off the thyroid for now, but that's enough. We can talk about all different ways to detox it and cleanse it and things like that. But, uh, well, maybe I'll mention a couple of those things. Like I said, because they're so prone to heavy metals and toxins and things like that, it's a good idea to to do a cleanse or some kind of a flush, or at least put things in the body that'll draw those toxins out uh, to keep your thyroid from dysfunctioning. Those would be things like, uh, uh, what's it called, Audio Clarity, which is uh, uh, something that you could put in your water, which actually I'm bringing to the store here really soon, which completely breaks down all calcification in the body and pulls uh, heavy metals out of the body and renders them inert so that they don't damage your system. It's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. and I'm kind of experimenting with it with myself right now. I'm drinking a gallon of it a day to see how it does for me. But I have friends who have already 
done it and seen amazing benefits of kidney stones dissolving and all kinds of calcification issues disappearing, but also uh, for pulling heavy metals out of the body. If you've heard of zeolites or fulvic acid, uh, those are uh, byproducts of volcanic activity and they also chelate and pull heavy metals out of the system. Um, the shilajit, which I talk about a lot and I know a lot of you guys are taking, um, contains high amounts of fulvic acid. Um, so that's going to be an excellent supplement for, for uh, detoxing the, uh, the thyroid as well. And um, chlorella. Any of your algaes, chlorella and spirulina both, but chlorella specifically is amazing for chelating and binding metals and pulling them out of the system. And I'll throw one more out there. Uh, if anybody's heard of EDTA, EDTA is actually a synthetic. And you know I don't have much for synthetics in my store, but uh, it is one synthetic I have. Um, I don't have it so people can take it orally, because when people take it orally, the stomach acid dissolves it and it doesn't really work that well. It's actually a suppository. It goes in this way. Uh, it works a lot better that way, and it's used therapeutically. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a synthetic, but it works binds heavy metals and it pulls them out and it works very quickly. You only need to do it once. So those are some great things that you can use to, to detox the thyroid. Because again, if your thyroid's sluggish, your energy levels are going to be down, you're going to start to gain weight, you're going to start to see major, major problems. So 